Weather is on our minds and on the minds of many folks here this week, especially a lot of snow across the plains, the northern plains, especially on tap for this week and much more. Here to walk us through with the latest, Eric Snodgrass and Nutri. And Eric, good to catch up with you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I am doing well. And yeah, I, I was kind of hoping to maybe cruise a little bit easier into the end of this year, but Mother Nature's got different plans for me with this big winter storm that's coming through. And then what follows it, which is some brutally cold air. So definitely. I'll just stay on the edge of my seat and keep watching it. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk that potent winter storm that is setting up here across much of the upper Midwest, the Northern Plains, especially here this week. We started hearing about this mid to late last week, Eric. Uh, get us, uh, catch us up on the latest. It sounds like a, a lot of snow for many folks, some ice thrown in there as well. What are you seeing with the latest forecast? Well, you know, what was interesting was that before this system even started to crank in the plains today on Monday, don't forget, it put over four feet of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And that's fantastic because the California drought situation has been terrible. And now all of a sudden we have some great early season snowpack. Now that happened last year, big snows in December, and then it shut off January to March. And while I'm not fully worried about that happening this year, understand that this system, which started on Saturday in the West, already did that and it's about to blow up in the mid part of the country where there's blizzard warnings out for the high plains from parts of eastern colorado and even a couple of counties in western kansas i think getting all the way up there to the western dakotas where it's going to be a really rough go of it by the way this storm system will clear the east coast by next sunday so this is this is a long-lived system and it's because it's cut off from the main flow of the jet stream it's just sitting there and spinning but yeah, the snowfall totals in the northern plains, upper Midwest could be huge. We could have places that pick up over a foot of snow from western Nebraska, far northwestern Nebraska, through the center part of uh, South Dakota into southern uh, North Dakota. And then later in uh, north of Minneapolis, uh, getting over northern Wisconsin. And then it'll put more snow down to the northeast after this. So that's overall, we, we like to see that. I mean, it's going to make for a really rough go, but that's moisture. That is, there's an inch and a half of liquid equivalent in that, which means it's there, it's stored, it'll be there when the spring melts or even if we get a midwinter melt it's going to get into the soil helping to relieve some of the drought issues there what i don't like is that we could get some severe weather in the western plains i'm talking about like western kansas the panhandles of oklahoma and texas down into the central texas area but then that severe weather threat tonight then shifts tomorrow on tuesday to the lower mississippi river valley and this is a pretty potent cold front but along that front it'll bring rain through the midwest it'll bring a little bit of ice to parts of the upper midwest and then uh, it'll eventually, I was just doing a recording for some folks out in North Carolina. I'm like, well, on Friday, it'll be coming over you. So Thursday into Friday is when that front finally gets its way to the East Coast, probably more Thursday than Friday, but delivers some rain there as well, plus some snow in New England. So yeah, this one's going to be good. Uh, we'll look back on it and see that it was one that helped to sh shrink the total drought number. We're still at about 78% of the lower 48 in some form of drought, I expect to see some changes after just this one system rolls through over the next uh, five days or so. Definitely. A lot of things to watch. Stay tuned with your latest weather forecast for more. Eric, let's talk South America. That was a news headline out of the weekend. Argentina saw some better than anticipated rain, it looked like. They did. They, they There was decently widespread storms. Uh, I thought they'd be a bit more scattered in nature, but you look at some of the data and it suggests that they were they delivered better rain than we thought. Now, what's important about this is that given how low the soil moisture is, it takes sustained rainfall. For them to come out of their drought. This is just one system that rolled through and now the models are for the next 10 days very dry. They're back over to what they were. Uh, where is it wet? Most of Brazil, with the exception of like Rio Grande do Sul. So, you know, you've heard, I've heard you talk about some of the big numbers that could possibly be coming out of South America, specifically Brazil. Um, and I have nothing to refute that. I think the numbers could be very large. In fact, the deficits that Argentina may have, Brazil may make up for them, just given the increased acreage and, and the the productivity they're going to get out of these decent rains. And by the way, it's kind of crazy to think about this, but there will be some soybeans in Brazil getting harvested in about a week and a half for two weeks. Now that'll carry all the way through February, but they're already ready to pull some of this out. It's kind of crazy to think that way. Definitely. Well, we're going to be watching that weather situation there. And I know you and I have talked about La Nina and how that ties into everything, Eric. What is the latest you're seeing with La Nina? And are we going to see La Nina finally dissipate across the globe? Yeah, my narrative has been that we'll start to see the La Nina come off its peak at some point between uh, December 15 and uh, January 15. I that's just the time frame. I could definitely be wrong on this, but I, I've got a few signals that suggest that. And it's 
really good to see that the trade winds are making this huge push right now, which is saying the La Nina, which already has ocean temperatures about a degree Celsius below normal, that's a strong La Nina. Uh, it's going to make a big push right now. Now, what does that mean for us? That means the end of December, the start of January, we're going to see better chances of getting cold shots of air across the whole country, a more active um, storm pattern. My kids are pretty pumped about it because they want a white Christmas. So is my dad. So the two of them or the three of them together are pretty excited about this pattern. But I like it because it's one where we just keep systems rolling through. So that's that's good. I want that drought to be shrunk in a major way by the time we get into spring. But I think that after we get through the mid part of January, the La Nina will begin to start its fade, which means other things are going to take over. And at this point, I don't necessarily see those other features. I'm talking about like the MJO or the North Northern Hemisphere blocking pattern, all these things that us weather geeks talk about. None of those are bad things. They, they, they will bring in decent moisture across the United States. So get ready for a pretty volatile winter, especially after this system rolls through, just gonna tell you, it's gonna get very, very cold to finish this uh, this month here at December in the United States. What about Europe? Before we run out of time, Eric, what's some of the latest you're hearing there? Well, I, I'm not sure if you saw this, maybe on social media or in the news, but they had some big snows in the UK and shut down some of the major interstates. Uh, even had some thunder snow there, which is a bit rare, more rare in, in the UK, but cold across. France, Germany, Poland, uh, I mean, that's the northern part of Europe, including Scandinavia and the UK. And uh, that cold risk seems to stick around for a while. So you've got the United States showing up cold. You've got most of northern Europe showing up cold. And over in Asia, the whole eastern half of Asia right now, uh, China especially, is showing up with cold anomalies. And it's cold in Australia, even though they're going into summer. So what I see here is that those cold anomalies, especially across the Northern Hemisphere, will likely drive heating demand going forward. We've been talking a lot about how delicate um, that, that, that balance is right now with supply and demand on diesel, on you know just uh, electricity demand and, and natural gas. So I think we're gonna have to watch that carefully. Well, we have plenty to keep our eyes on and you follow it every day with your daily newsletter. You can sign up for that free. The link is on our website, markettalkag.com. With that, Eric Snodgrass of Nutrien, always great to catch up with you, buddy. Thanks for the weather forecast and updates, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right. Sounds good. See you then.